Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to all of you to our online author and referee tutorial for physical review fluids. My name is Eric Logan, one of the co-lead editors of the journal. So I will be joined today in this session by four um, uh, people. I'm going to introduce them one by one. First is Beverly McKeon. She's also co-lead editor uh, of the journal. Um, so she's based at Caltech and is about to move to Stanford. I'm at the University of Cambridge, and I'm joined with um, by uh, Brad Rubin from the APS editorial office. He's the journal manager of the journal. And by two of the associate editors of the journal, we have Luminita Daniela from University of Rouen in France, and we have Roberto Zenit from Brown University. So I'm gonna first go uh, briefly through the program. We have a, a full program for about an hour. So after a few minutes of uh, welcome from me, We'll have a presentation of the Journal of and its history by uh, Brad. Then Beverly will uh, briefly uh, introduce and highlight two new initiatives for the journal, uh, which, which are recent. Uh, and then the bulk of the today's session will be a Q&A uh, moderated by Brad, where uh, the editors can uh, and Brad as well can answer questions about the procedure of the journal uh, and any questions you may have as an author or as a referee. And then. Uh, we'll close uh, the event. Will, will last an hour or less. Okay, so that's the that's the plan. So before I leave, leave the floor to Brad, I wanna I wanted to take a minute to highlight the faces behind the journal. So the journal is led by a team of two colleague editors. That's Beverly and I, and with us we have seventeen editors in addition to the two of us who are handling the papers that are submitted to us. We have two uh, editors at the bottom left here who are. Uh, focused solely on letters, and Brad in a minute will tell you about the letters, the uh, short format. Um, and then, uh, in addition to the two letters editors and the two lead editors, there are 15 associate editors. Um, and we're very privileged in the journal to have a, editors, a team of editors who are very experienced, uh, very distinguished members of the community, and uh, uh, who together cover the whole spectrum of fluid mechanics. So when you send a paper to us, it will be seen by two editors. First, it will be seen by a lead editor, and then it will be sent to an associate editor. And that associate editor will be an expert in the, your research area or not far from your research area. And so we're very fortunate in the journal to be able to cover the whole spectrum. So now I will leave, uh, let Brad tell you a little bit more about the history of the journal and the procedures of the journal if you are a referee or if you are an author, and then we'll go back to a discussion. Brad? Thank you. So yes, the uh, Physical Review of Fluids began publishing in 2016 when the editors of Physics of Fluids uh, left that journal. They, they all left to found the new journal. They were unhappy with things that were happening at AIP, American Institute of Physics, which published Physics of Fluids. The, um, this journal is, uh, well, it's the only APS journal devoted exclusively to the field of fluid mechanics. It's grown rapidly with uh, uh, almost as getting close to 600 papers in recent years. Um, the letters section, which Eric mentioned, publishes shorter letter style papers uh, containing especially timely and important new results. Uh, each month, uh, the editors select two to five papers of particular interest or importance or clarity as editor's suggestions. Those can be either letters or regular articles. Uh, the editor's suggestions, they're selected by uh, the editors, okay? So some of the uh, topics that we publish, well, turbulence is the largest single topic, but, but it's not, you know, there are many other topics uh, that uh, in both low and high Reynolds number uh, fluids, we, as, as Eric said, we cover the full spectrum of uh, fluid mechanics, but this gives you an idea of the uh, relative uh, volume from different fields. Okay. The, uh, uh, we are closely coupled with the Division of Fluid Dynamics. Uh, as you know, the DFD meeting is, is going to be in, uh, in about a week. Um, the, uh, and a couple of ways we do that, the, the, the division runs the gallery of fluid motion, but the winners, the award winners of that uh, contest uh, and there's about 100 uh, submissions every year, about 10 of them are, are selected as award winners, and those award winners uh, 
publish uh, are invited to submit a short paper to physical review fluids. Uh, it's an open access paper, but there's no charge for it, uh, describing their poster or video. Then when those papers are published, they appear together as a collection. And the recent collection was uh, of, of last year's winners was just published. So you can find it on the physical review uh, fluids uh, site. The another way is that the uh, Frank Eel Award is given for the paper judge to be the best in the previous year uh, by young authors. That that's the idea. The best paper published by exclusively where all of the authors are young, and the criteria is that the highest academic degree was awarded no more than twelve years ago. Um, uh, and this uh, the the committee which awards this is external is is uh, not the editors. It's an external committee of the DFD. Okay, so uh, other uh, ways are that the editors, uh, okay, the editors uh, choose invited speakers from the DFD meeting with a highly significant contribution to publish uh, papers, uh, to publish a paper in the, again, an invited paper to appear in the journal. These papers can then appear together as a collection when they are published. The uh, there are also, a, you, uh, now we are having a couple of fluid next symposia every year and important, uh, noteworthy papers from, from those symposia may also be invited and appear as a collection. So um, the, uh, the, at this coming meeting, there will be two mini symposia, one on the fluid mechanics of microplastic transport uh, organized by Michelle de Benedetto and Nicholas Ouellette, and then uh, another one on body, soft body slamming fluids organized by Sung Wan Jung. Right. The uh, criteria for publication in physical review is that it, it must be a new paper, not uh, previous, it must be new research, not uh, something not previously published. It, it must be obviously scientifically sound, correct, and not misleading as judged by the referees and the editors. Uh, significantly advanced the physics of flows and important in its field. In other words, we don't just publish something because it's correct. It has to be something that will is important to research and will likely stimulate other further research. And of course, the paper has to be well written so that it's accessible and to readers and, and can be understood by them. Uh, the peer review process, as you, you may know, is that when the manuscript is submitted, it is first given an evaluation by an editor, not a detailed evaluation, but uh, uh, the editor ha who has a lot of experience and knowledge in the field can look at the paper and say, you know, this really doesn't look like something appropriate for the journal, then they can reject it right away. And that saves your the, the author's time and the editor's and the referee's time and allow the authors to do something else with the paper. If the editor said, yeah, this looks like it could fit into, it could be appropriate, then he, will pitch, he or she will choose referees uh, to send it to. The referees will uh, write a more detailed report, uh, looking at the paper in more detail. Uh, they will send that, uh, but usually we, we send it to two referees. They Then it comes back to the editor who can either reject the paper again at that point, they could accept the paper, or they could send it back to the authors for further revision, and then the process gets repeated until the paper is either reje finally rejected or accepted for publication. Uh, a paper, um, it's the structure of a scientific paper. So if you're writing a paper, it's important to have an introduction. We, you, you want to uh, explain why, uh, you know, why is this interesting? Why is it important? Not just how you did, what you did and how you did it, but the introduction should try and make a case for why this paper matters. Um, uh, the, the need for your work in the scientific community and put by putting it into, into the context of previous work and then explaining, you know, what the structure of the paper will be. Um, in the body of the paper, then you want to explain what you did and how you did it. The repre and keeping in mind that you, you know, if someone reading this paper wanted to be able to reproduce it, would they be able to do so? You should provide enough information. Uh, of how it could be reproduced and verified. Uh, and then you want to, of course, state what your findings are and 
and, and any accompanying interpretation and explain what was found that is new and make sure you're explaining what is new and, and separating that from what was done before. And, um, and then finally, in the conclusion, uh, you want to um, you know, reiterate uh, what was the original motivation and, and state the implications, if any, for the future research. Okay. Um, so when you prepare a paper for submission or research of, or resubmission, you want to um, identify your audience and think about which is the appropriate journal. Uh, then, uh, and, and you can do that by looking at papers published in the journal and say, does this paper fit in that, that journal by looking at those the papers, by reading, actually reading the journal. Uh, identify a clear take home message. Uh, make sure that you give adequate citation. Uh, think about what papers you're going to, to cite and what are the key papers? You want to have sort of key papers that you cite, maybe you know somewhere from two to five of those, and then other papers that are supporting, but maybe not key papers for your paper. And and then um, you know it's important to to have the proper uh, authorship on the paper. Everyone who made a significant contribution should be offered authorship, and then uh, other people could make be also acknowledged. Um, when submitting, you want to, it's important, it will really help you to provide a cover letter where you briefly explain why you think the paper should be published in this journal. This will be helpful to the editors and it, it, it will, could help your paper. Uh, you may suggest reviewers. The editors are not obligated to choose the reviewers. They may or may not choose the reviewers that you suggest, but this could be helpful to the editors. Uh, it, you know, the people that you think would be would be good reviewers for the paper and not just your friends, but, you know, don't don't I mean, choose people who you think are experts in the in the in the field and you would re respect and like to hear their opinion on your paper. Uh, you can point out also, you know, if you think that some people might be uh, have a conflict of interest if they review your paper, you can point that out as well. Again, the editors make their own independent choices. They're not obligated to, uh, to, to uh, fo answer, your, you know, follow your requests, but we do want to know it and it, it could be helpful. And also often we will follow your requests. But uh, so when you resubmit uh, your paper, make substantive arguments uh, about, the, about uh, what you're doing. Focus on the science, uh, be factual and collegial, uh, address each point of criticism, and uh, you know, do not start out assuming that the 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 referees or editors are sort of biased against you and and so on. Even if you've gotten a negative review, uh, you know, uh, it's important to address the science. Even if you feel that points in the review are wrong, you address the science in the review, and you you re remain collegial and uh, assume that you know good good intentions on the part of the reviewer. Okay. Uh, and then when you are asked to review um, a, a, a paper, you ask if the work is novel, interesting and original, if it meets the criteria that I outlined earlier. Well, if, you know, it could be, but if the advance is too small, it has to be a significant enough advance. So if it's, we, we don't want, you know, only incremental advances that don't really move the field forward. Um, so you want to ask if, if you think other researchers will be interested in this and, and it, it will lead to additional work. Uh, obviously, is the work valid and reproducible? And is the work uh, well presented? Can, you know, would it do, you, is it easy for you to sort of go through the paper and understand what the authors are doing? Or do they, you know, do they need to work on the presentation? Okay, so when you actually sit down to write the report, it's good to give a short summary of the content of the paper and provide reasons for your recommendation. Think about how you would feel as an author reading the report. Uh, you know, suggest ways for the authors to improve the paper uh, and 
uh, and be mindful of the time. We're all very busy and it, you know we know these things take time, but also consider uh, how you would feel as an author waiting for the report. Okay. And so if you decide that you really don't have the time to referee, tell us that as soon as you are aware of that. Um, uh, you can, you know, respond to our reminders. Uh, you know, if you feel that you're overburned and need a break, that's fine. You, you, you know, just, just let us know. Um, you, and if so, if you're not going to review the paper, it could be helpful for you to suggest alternative referees or, or recommend new ones. Uh, another possibility is you can write a joint report with a student or a colleague that is there. And that, that, you know, we can do, you can do that, but just let us know that you're doing that and who is contributing to the report. Okay, so if you're not, haven't yet been uh, sent a review and you wanna join the referee pool, uh, you, you can do that. There's a website there uh, where you can actually sign up. Uh, you can go and you can sign up. Uh, we ask you provide information about your expertise um, and if you're already a referee and your expertise you feel is changing, you can you can go and update that in in in, in our in your referee record. Um, uh, so what we are looking for when we send so even if you sign up though you it, you know it there may not you know there has to be a paper and then the editor has to find you and recognize you and and send you that may take some time. So, but what we're looking for is, uh, you know, we do look at people's, when we go to send a paper for review, we look at people's publication record to see that, you know, we feel that they are an expert in, in, the, in the subject. Uh, and, you know, if you're a graduate student, you know, you can ask your, uh, to write a joint report with, with an advisor. Okay. Okay, Beverly. Hello, thank you. Um, I'm Beverly McKee, and I'm a co-lead editor of the journal. And I'd just like to add uh, my thanks to everyone for joining us today. It's good to see so many people online, and uh, even to see some uh, editors from uh, competition online. So thanks for joining us. I'm going to take a couple of minutes today um, just to tell you about a couple of new initiatives, and then we'll go into the Q and A. Um, so this one is not actually so new. We've been running uh, the Journal Club for uh, Physical Review Fluids now since 2021. Um, you can find information about all of the Journal Club events at this link shown here on the top bullet point. And that's across all of the physical review journals. But um, you'll see that there's been a PR Fluids event almost every month uh, since uh, the middle of 2021, uh, with the exception of the summer months when uh, we're all busy with, with other things. Um, those, uh, the format of those is a 15 minute presentation from one of the authors of a recently published PR Fluids paper, followed by 15 minutes of Q&A. So you actually get to hear the, the summary of the paper and then interact uh, live with the authors. Um, these are recorded and they're also uh, published through that. Uh, you can reach them through the Journal Club website. They're on the YouTube uh, channel for APS Physics. Um, so, so far we've had a lot of engagement um, for the papers and then for the more review type or perspective type um, uh, activities we've had as well. Um, so that's the first one. The next one is a new, this is a, a very new initiative. Um, Physical Review Fluids is seeking an early career board member, uh, so someone to join us with an interest in social media. So this position is ideal for a postdoctoral researcher or uh, generally an early career researcher who has interest and experience with science communication and specifically social media. Um, so they'll work in collaboration with the uh, editorial team, there's a social media subcommittee, uh, and they will have a role as a, a member of the editorial board, an early career board member. Position is for one year, can be renewed, uh, and there's a modest stipend uh, associated with it. So we're really hoping that there's some folk out there who um, really would like to fill this, this gap um, to be able to uh, promote the science uh, from physical review fluids, primarily via Twitter, but generally um, uh, uh, um, help with our social media strategy. So if you're interested, um, you can see the details at the bottom of this slide here. Please send a CV and a short sample of science related 
uh, communication posts uh, to this email address. Deadline is December 9th, uh, 5 p.m. So with that, uh, we will move to the Q&A uh, session. So back to you, Brad. Okay, thank you. And yes, yeah, so if you have a questions about anything that we've talked about, anything to do with the journal, this is your opportunity to ask the editors. Uh, what we'll do is I'll, um, uh, you can either send it, uh, type it into the chat or raise your electronic hand and I'll call on you. Um, if, if you raise your electronic, if you wanna speak, you can then unmute yourself and speak uh, after I call on you. The other thing is that one ground rule is uh, not to ask a question about a specific paper. So don't, you know, if you had a paper and something happened in the paper and you're very upset about it, or even if you're not upset, you just have a question about it, not to make it about the specific paper. Make it, you know, ask it in a broader way that would be uh, of interest to more people than just, uh, you know, specifically what happened, you know, about your paper. So, um, okay. So uh, we do have a hand up. So uh, go ahead, uh, Shalini Singh. Good evening, sir. I'm from India, Shalini Singh. And uh, my question is, sir, just suppose a review, uh, two reviewers are contradictory in the same comment. Uh, so how to deal with that? Should we tell to the editor or what should we do? Okay, I'm sorry, so I didn't quite understand you, but speak, speak a little bit slowly, more slowly. Uh, sir, if two reviewers, uh, for the same comment, they are asking for a, a different 180 degree of opinion, then what should we do? Okay, so the question is, if you like have two contradictory reviewers are there. and they, they that write different reviews on the same paper, and they have yes. maybe contradictory things, or they're saying something a little bit differently. Yes, so yes. Sir. Is that the, that's the question? Yes, sir, uh -huh. yes. Okay, Luminita, do you want to answer that? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, what happens is that the decision will uh, belong at the end to the editor. So uh, if you really find that one referee asks you to modify equation number 10 in some way and the other referee uh, asks you to modify in a different way, but exactly on the same object, uh, then you should, uh, should uh, go back to the editor and see with him or her how to deal with that. But uh, I have not seen such a very specific um, problems uh, uh, till now generally uh, the opinions of the reviewers are uh, rather complementary and um, as far as i have seen I, they are generally constructive so they, uh, they their opinion should help to improve the paper so we should do our best uh, to answer as best as you can to all questions and then if really you find that there are two points of view that are contradictory then you should raise uh, that to a editor and see with uh, him or her and uh, uh, they, they will be able Able to decide in some in some way but uh, the way to proceed is very constructive okay thank you ma'am may i add a little bit to that brad yeah go ahead uh, well thank you that's a that's a very good question uh, shilani thank you for being here and the, the one thing that uh, that has happened to me in the past if i have two contrasting re referee reports um I normally send it back to the authors and give them the opportunity to to answer to to the more critical referee. And if the opinions remain, uh, often do we often ask for an adjudicator, for a third referee, or one of our board members to help us untie uh, uh, these contrasting opinions. Uh, so we we do our best to 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 take the best part of your paper and to give you the opportunity to be uh, to reply and to fairly assess uh, if your paper is worthy of publication so there's a uh, there's several uh, ways that you can do this but again as as luminita said uh, you need to reply even if the the, the referees is very is very critical you need to do your best to clarify as much as possible what are what is your scientific contribution and why should it be published Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to take the first question on the chat. I've noticed okay. so someone, a question from Mukul, and um, is saying that he, he I'm, I, I, they have noticed um, that there is a page uh, limit for PRF. And the question was, how do you see the editors, how do the editors see the balancing that with the scope of papers of completeness? So 
Uh, there is no page limit for pure fluids papers. There is a page limit in the letter section. So if you go on the pure fluids website, and if you click on authors at the top of the page, I will give you for all the APS journals, uh, the size limits so for pure fluids, a letter is limited to uh, 4,500 words. And there's a, there's a formula to count uh, equ equations and figures uh, and bibliography, but basically 4,500 words for letters. And if you write a comment on a paper or reply to a comment, this is 3,500. Uh, these are you know only for those two categories. So the, of course, the bulk of the papers, the overwhelming majority of the papers we publish are neither comments, nor reply, nor letters. They're regular papers. And for those, uh, we do not have a page limit. And so therefore, if you have a paper that's eight pages or a paper that, that's, that is 78 pages, uh, you can submit either to us. There is no limit on pages. I think we would encourage you to think about what is the, the right length for the contribution that you're making. So I think that's a, a self-regulation thing to, to add there. So then we have, uh, and even for the letters, by the way, you can have supplementary material, which is, but uh, then, then we have a, pay, a, a question from Sri Yank. What's the benefit of submitting a paper in PRF instead of others like JFM? Mm -hmm. Everly, you want to answer? Shall I take that one? Yeah. Uh, so that's a good question. So, you know, after, after long enough in the field, sometimes you have a sense for where their sort of natural home would be in the context of where the sequence of papers, um, you know, associated with the, your contribution has, has published, but that's not a, a sole reason to, to publish in one journal versus the other. Um, one strength of uh, the physical review uh, is the fact that we reach a very broad physics community. So we really leverage the fact that, um, you know, we have sister and brother journals. Um, we have PRL, which of course is the flagship. We have a lot of uh, all the letter journals, PRA, uh, et cetera. And so we will reach through the APS um, um, publicity side of things. Your, your article will, will reach a broad physics community. So that may be uh, something that you wish to, to consider here. Um, you may also wish to consider the uh, editorial um, staff, so uh, who's going to be handling your paper and um, their familiarity with the, the field in which you're, you're publishing. Um, so getting good reviews, getting timely reviews. Um, those are the sorts of considerations that you, you, uh, you should make when you're thinking about, you know, well, how, who do you want to read your paper? Um, and, you know, again, we've got to fulfill all the criteria that Brad laid out. Um, but that's uh, something to think about as you pick your journal. I don't know whether you want to add anything to that one, Eric. No. Okay. Okay. We have another question from Muhammad Irfan Zafar. Uh, the question is, how early in his her career can someone be a referee? Can a PhD student apply to be a referee with the supervision of his or her supervisor? Um, Brad, do you want to add the last question to that? Because it's related. It says, um, is it essential to have a publication in PRF for being a referee? I think those two kind of go together, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do you want to answer that? Or Eric, you want to answer that? Uh, I can, I can uh, begin, uh, perhaps. I'm happy to begin. Is it essential to have a publication in PRF to be a referee? No, absolutely not. Uh, uh, I have sent papers as an editor to be reviewed by people who have not published. Uh, and then um, with us, um, obviously, you know, a reviewer needs to be someone who uh, is familiar with the um, the area. Uh, and so it needs to be someone who uh, has experience with scientific writing, has experience with research, can be critical of the work, uh, uh, and you know knows enough to have arguments to argue for or against a particular paper. So of course you need some experience. But you know senior PhD students can be good referees. A senior PhD is someone who has spent three, four, five years doing research intense on some specific you know a number of different research projects. They can be amazingly detailed referees. Some of my best referees have gotten by very early career people, late PhDs, postdocs. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, yes. Uh, a PhD students can apply. Uh, sometimes PhD students would do it in collaboration with their PI, their supervisor who's who's busy and wants you know give them the experience. Or 
um, uh, they, um, you know, for one reason or another, end up uh, on the database or end up being known a known entity to an editor and then being sent a paper to review. And that can be extremely good. And you do not need to have published with us to be a referee with us. Um, the, I don't think any of us would have ever thought of, of that as a requirement. So this is totally um, not a requirement at all. Maybe I'll just add for, for the students on the call that the best way to learn how to do this is to ask your PI if you can help with a review. So you'll see how experienced people construct reviews. I think this is really important, especially if you're, you haven't published a lot, so you haven't been on the receiving end or haven't received some reviews, so you know the type of material that's in there. So, um, you know, as a, as a PhD advisor, I'm very glad of help for people who will go through a paper with a fine tooth comb. Um, and then, I, you know, as part of the education process, how does one write an effective review? How do you read a paper as a reviewer? So um, if you're interested in learning how to do that, uh, you know, obviously Brad has put some information out during this talk uh, today, but I encourage you to reach out to your PI and say, you know, hey, if there's a paper that comes in that you're asked to review in your area, could I um, participate in that? Now, a very important point there is that um, our review process is transparent, meaning that we record uh, in our system anyone who sees the paper. So if your PI is going to do that, they will need to contact the editor to say, I would like to do this as a joint review with this student. And so then you'll be in the database automatically. But um, uh, the, you know, review the review process is confidential. Uh, so you would need to be sort of a formal part of it to participate in that way. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Daniel Netherwood. Is there a guide for the amount of time you should spend on reviewing a paper? Luminita, you want to answer that? that? That's, uh, when you are invited uh, to perform a review on a paper, it is specified uh, the beginning that uh, you have, it's usually one month that is uh, mentioned for your review. But of course, you have the possibility to contact uh, the staff or the editor and uh, to ask a little bit more. But we try to keep a timing so it's not too long. So uh, uh, a time of uh, four, four weeks or five weeks, uh, it's uh, quite reasonable for uh, the papers that uh, we deal with. If you, if the question is how long should you personally spend uh, doing oh. it, um, maybe do you want to you want to answer that one too, Luminita? I'm not sure what the context yeah. was, but um, you know, for someone starting out, how long does it take to do a review? I guess there's the time for you to read the paper, to understand the paper, and then to make uh, whatever decision. But that it depends on the experience of the people and. Uh, and it's very, it's very variable. That depends on the correlation that the subject of the paper has with your own background. It sometimes is very easy for us to read uh, some papers that are complex, but it's just because we know that field. And sometimes it's more difficult, even for older people, it's more difficult to read even short papers, but they are more uh, that are more complex. So it's, that depends. It's very variable. It depends on each person and. Uh, yeah, and, and sometimes it is as far as I see that you may produce a report, not necessarily on the whole paper, you can express your opinion on uh, part one to four, and then uh, just say, if necessary, that oh, uh, that part, the details of the experiment or whatever, that I'm not specialist on that, or just to do not say no, uh, nothing on that part. So you are not obliged to know everything on everything in that paper. But of course, uh, if you accept to make uh, the review, then uh, you should understand uh, what happens uh, overall. If uh, I may uh, add a little bit of a comment to, to, to this, uh, this question, uh, the, the one thing that you shouldn't expect the referee to become the style corrector of the paper, right? So you should focus as a referee on expressing what is your technical opinion about the paper? And if it needs better style, better English, better plots, you should say that in the in your report. But you should certainly not, not try to correct the spelling or grammar of the paper. Uh, because again, that is not the best use of your time. Uh, and, and again, that comes to the authors. They, when you submit a paper, it should be in the best possible way, such that the referees can see the value, the scientific value of the paper. So it should be well written, polished, uh, and not contain um, 
grammatical. That, that, that is I, one of the questions that uh, are addressed to the referees, that uh, if it is new enough physics, if it is uh, clearly written, if it, the English is uh, sufficiently good. Uh, so it's uh, there are several questions that are addressed when we are invited to to produce a report on the paper. So you should express that on uh, mm -hmm. on. Uh, and that that uh, I, maybe I would add uh, one word on the um, uh, significantly new physics. As far as I have seen for four years now, that is a very variable <laughs> point of view. Some people will find that it, it is enough new physics. And uh, uh, we come back to the question earlier that we may have sometimes two opinions different or not uh, uh, very the same. Uh, but sometimes some people uh, find that it is enough new physics and uh, other people can find that it's not enough new physics. So again, it's a, a very subjective uh, thing. But of course, if we go to the incremental, what we call incremental research is just a new step ahead, then it, sh it should be stated and then uh, uh, normally we do not publish the paper. Okay, uh, let's move to the next question, which is, which one will be more appropriate for complex fluids and polymeric fluids, PRE or PRF? Which journal? Roberto? Okay, let me, oh. let, perhaps let me yeah, take Eric. this one. Go ahead. Yeah, so you will have noticed, uh, maybe some of you have experience reading or reviewing or sending papers to physical review E, that there is within PRE a fluid section. So obviously there are, that means that uh, Enoscov PRL, of course, also publishes fluid dynamics. One of the sections in uh, PRL has fluid dynamics in it. So therefore, in theory, if a fluid paper could be sent to PRL or it could be sent to PRE, it could be sent to PR fluids, and there's a choice to be made. Uh, so there are a couple of questions you could ask yourself when you were about to submit the paper. The first question is, who is your primary audience? Within the physics community, is your primary audience one of... Um, Statistical physics, nonlinear dynamics, polymer physics, uh, more the classical physics style, or is it more fluid dynamics and some intersection with applied mathematics and some intersection with engineering? And that, you know, PRE will be more of the former and PR fluid will be more of the latter traditional DFD type um, uh, kind of community. The other question you can ask yourself, OK, if I want to present my paper, will it be more appropriate for me to be at the March meeting? Will it be more appropriate for me? to be the traditional DFT meeting. And that would be also one way, qualitative way for you to decide whether it's more of a PRE paper or PR fluids papers. Now I wanna say, I think that being said, PR fluids can uh, and has published a lot of papers on non-Newtonian fluid mechanics and complex fluids and polymeric fluids, both at the microstructure, but also large scale flow features. And so uh, it would be, it would have to be very little fluid dynamics for us to not be interested in at least considering the paper. Uh, for, for, for submission and, and for publication in the journal. Again, if you may add a little bit to uh, what Eric just said, uh, the other thing that you may want to consider is to look at who are the editors of the, each journal, right? We have a number of, of associate editors who are experts in the subject of complex fluids, viscoelastic fluids, and so on. So if, if the if the, the literature that you're citing includes the names that appear on our editorial board, then you should definitely use uh, send your paper to us. I, that's my opinion. Okay, good. Uh, I don't see any more questions at this point. Uh, wait a minute. Uh... Well, um, let me let me just um, respond to the one that Eric answered in there. But there's a question about the tracking system for submitted manuscripts. So um, Eric put, posted the um, the link and the text about it. But yes, you can check through the system on the status of your paper. So you see when it's with an editor. You see when the reviews are coming in. Um, so you can see how things are going there. And I, what, the reason I wanted to pick this up is to say that. Um, you can reach out through prfluids at APS.org if you have a question about the status of the paper. Uh, and that's okay. So the editors are, um, you know, humans. You saw the, saw the slides. Um, do, do feel free to contact uh, the editor if you have a query about the status. 
Uh, now that would, you know, that's not going to mean every week reaching out to say, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Um, but, you know, if it reaches a little, a long time or there's some pressure on, um, on the results, then feel free to reach out and just make an inquiry about the status. So, you know, we assure you that the editors are trying to push things along as fast as they can. We, uh, as reviewers, um, everybody has a lot of pressures on their time, but um, our goal is to get the papers uh, through the system and get you decisions as soon as possible. And you can follow that status on this uh, link. Good, thanks. Uh, we, we, we do have another uh, question here from Sumya Deep Paul. Uh, does PR fluids prefer studies on new systems applications of fluid mechanics, or is it mainly targeted for classical, most debated fluid mechanics problems? In other words, how, how in, in terms of applications, I, I suppose that's what the question is. Um, so if you want to... You want uh, Roberto, to I don't think Roberto, Roberto has been adding, but why doesn't he go first? Okay, go Thank ahead. you, Beverly. I think, you know, the answer is, you accept papers that have scientific value, either if they're uh, from uh, applied systems or uh, problems that have been studied for a long time, if your investigation is capable of pushing that subject forward, either from the fundamental point of view of a very well-studied problem or something that is applied and new that needs to resolve its physics, then yes, we, are, we can accept both. We can give them the best, uh, uh, fairest possible assessment uh, to consider it for publication in, in physical review of fluids. Yeah, no, I'll just add to that to say we're, we're super excited about new fields. Um, if you really have a brand new discovery or a, um, a, you're expanding sort of the boundaries of what we consider under fluid dynamics, that's great. We would love to host that uh, in the journal, subject to the, um, uh, the requirements for, for publication. Um, you know, what, what we find is that there's a whole lot of work on um, uh, well-established problems. And there we come back to, you have to really clearly delineate what the new contribution is uh, that you're making. Any other uh, questions from the audience? Feel free to either write it in the chat or speak up. Well, well, there, well the questions to, uh, pop up, I will take this opportunity to, to add to what Beverly said earlier about why should you publish in physical review fluids? And I will give you my, my, my personal answer. Is that, and you should ask yourself, why do you want to publish a paper, a scientific paper? Do you want it to be read by uh, the community? Do you want it to be, to reach the experts and to become part of the discussion um, of scientific discovery or you just want an easy path publication, right? And I, I think the answer is obvious. If you're here listening to us, it's because you're interested in, in being part of this uh, academic adventure to have your paper to mean something to, to the community. Um, in that sense, with us, uh, uh, by looking at the, at the stature of the people in our editorial board, you can, say, you can clearly see that the, we are experts in the field and we are devoted to giving your paper the first, most uh, technically based assessment such that it can be published and you can contribute. Uh, uh, so in that sense, um, you can you know, choose the journal of your preference, but you should think about why do you want to publish. And if, it's, if it fulfills uh, these ideas of trying to advance the knowledge uh, of the physics of flow, in, uh, you should choose physical review fluids. That's my opinion. I'd like to add my own version of that and the answer to that question, which is one last point. And that is that I hear um, the Division of Food Dynamics every year gives out four prizes, four prestigious prizes uh, to members, distinguished members of the community. One of these four prizes is the, paper, the prize that Brad introduced, uh, the Frankie Award. Uh, and these are for early career defined, you know, there's a definition of early career, 12 years from uh, highest degree for all the authors. Uh, but if you have a very nice, very ambitious paper and you're a 
a kind of a junior researcher, a postdoc or assistant professor, someone kind of at the beginning of your career, then uh, PR Fluids will consider your paper and all the papers uh, of uh, all the junior uh, researchers for the prize every year. And so you could also win a prize. If you win this prize, you will be invited to give a talk in front of the plenary session at the DFD meeting. It is a very prestigious thing to do. Uh, and that could be an incentive for some of you also to send us your best papers. Should we just ask if, if there's anything, if we've got 10 minutes uh, or up to 10 minutes left, if uh, from the audience, is there anything that would have been helpful, anything you'd like to hear or have heard during the tutorial? If you can, if there's anything like that, please pop it in the chat. Obviously, we're evolving uh, how we do these things. It's nice to see people online. Um, you know, we can showcase what's coming at the DFD. We can focus on, uh, you can all focus on uh, uh, attending the talks if you're going to the DFD and we can reach people who aren't going to the DFD in this way. But please uh, let us know what would be helpful to you, especially if you're an early career uh, researcher. If you're happy to pop that in the chat, that would be uh, um, uh, very helpful. So I see that there is another question to write a review paper here. Does it need to be invited? Mm. Um, we don't publish review. We, we have published perspectives, but go ahead, Beverly, you want to answer? Yeah, let me let me take that one. Um, so uh, as Brad said, we don't publish reviews uh, per se. So um, the um, um, guidelines that Brad went over about what is required to publish in physical review fluids are um, apply to all um, unsolicited submissions. So any paper you want to send in, we apply that criterion of new contribution uh, to the field. The uh, exception to that is the one that Brad mentioned, which is, is an invited uh, paper, and that's a perspectives paper. And so perspectives really is the, the term to say, let's have a look at the field, have a take on an area of a field associated with an author or a group of authors. So it's not a, a full on review, um, but it's giving a, an opinion um, and a summary perhaps, or a status or an outlook on a, a specific part uh, of a field. Those are typically written by um, experts in the field. Um, so, and those are invited. Then the only other place where you might see a little bit more review material is in some of the invited papers where they are reviewing a field and then uh, reviewing their contributions as well as adding some new physics. So the answer to your question is that we don't do review papers per se. Um, if we uh, are interested in a perspective in the area, um, then the journal reaches out for, to invite someone to, um, uh, to write that. Any oh, feedback? Oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I was just going to say one, one additional thing that we perhaps could mention is that um, uh, the, the connectivity between the journals is, is quite important here. I'm just going back to the PRE uh, question. So within the physical review family, if you end up submitting a paper to a journal where it isn't quite the right fit, we can behind the scenes say, oh, hey, maybe this one is a better fit for a different uh, journal. So we, we can help help you find the right spot or potentially the right spot or, or say, you know, have you considered uh, this, uh, you know, the, the, the editors may um, reach out from a different journal, if that's the case. That happens with PRL, for example. Mm -hmm. um, if it uh, is a great fluids paper, but it doesn't quite meet the impact uh, criterion for PRL, uh, we, we can invite you to come over. You can always send it over to PR Fluid sort of within the system. So um, there, there's some mechanism to assist with getting you to the right place within the physical review family. And that does not necessarily comes to the letters of uh, physical review fluids because That's sometimes right. the referees asks to develop this and that part. So it comes to physical review fluids uh, large. That's a good point, yeah. And actually, you know, the last thing we should say is that we also have the open access branch. Um, so through physical review research. So um, if you are concerned about the open access requirements, you can still uh, publish through uh, PR Fluids. We have uh, uh, ways to do that. 
Right. Maybe we, we should just mention physical review research is, is a separate journal, but it's a it's all open access. It's a, it's a fully open access journal. But if it's a paper, if it's a fluids paper, then the PR fluids editors handle it, actually handle it, even though it's a separate journal, it will come to us and we will handle your paper in PR research if, it, if it's in the, in the topical area, proper topical area. Um, Another topic people might want to know about, since there's no questions, one is uh, is the supplemental material. Oh yeah. Um, this was, you know, not exactly asked about, but it, you know, I, I, it was touched on slightly in one of the answers, and um, the um, uh, the the letters papers that they're limited, but you can have supplemental material, which is additional material, which is maintained on our website, but it's not actually a part of the paper. But the criteria and regular articles can have supplemental material as well. But the criteria for that is that it should be possible, it, the supplemental material should not be essential to an understanding of the paper. It should be something like a description of experimental details or a derivation or proof, or it could be a computer program, you know, something that people wouldn't actually read, a, a, a very long tables or computer programs or something like that. Um, but you know, we, we do have that additional facility as, as part of your submission that you can have. Okay, well, we have we have five minutes left, so yeah, go ahead. Well, let's just say thank you to, to everyone for participating. Um, it's great to see so many people. Oh, another question. Perfect. Okay, no one asked if there's a limit on the amount of supplemental material. The answer is no. Oh, it's another one. If the manuscript goes to PRL to PRF from PRL with comments from the reviewers, will it be reviewed again or only reply to comments already uh, that were already got to be enough for the editors to decide? Go ahead. Uh, I can say. Oh, Eric. Go ahead. Uh, it, it, either either is fine. We're going to have the same answers. So either way, okay. I, I'll I'll go quick and then you can you can add. Uh, the answer is it depends. Uh, everything has been has happened. We have had papers that are come to us from PRL um, who have not been reviewed. We have had papers who come to us from PRL who have been reviewed but not by experts in our community and therefore they do need to be reviewed by at least one, possibly two people from our community. We've had people, papers that have been reviewed by one fluid mechanician and one physicist who's not really a fluid mechanician. So maybe a light touch review will be needed in addition. And then we've had papers that have been reviewed by fluid mechanics, uh, at least two referees in fluid mechanics, uh, but then they end up on us. And then uh, occasionally we accept without review because we feel that what the paper is missing is not new interesting fluid mechanics in some other criterion that is the PRL criterion. Uh, but for PR fluids, it is a it is an interesting, novel, rigorous study, and we will be very happy to publish it. And so, therefore, we have published papers accepted without review. So, therefore, it's really much a case by case basis on who has seen the paper, who has had an opinion to say because we care about the fluid mechanics, and we have to be mindful of what exactly is the criticism from the point of view of novelty in fluid mechanics. That's that's basically what I said. I'll add one thing, which is that. Uh, it's not an automatic transfer, so you do um, uh, request that, and you have a chance to address any outstanding review comments when you pass, uh, when you transfer, when you submit to to PR Fluids. So we're interested in your rebuttal or response there. So you have a chance to uh, address any of the PRL outstanding PRL review comments coming in uh, to the PR Fluids review process. Okay. okay, now I'll do my thanks. Okay, thank you everyone for uh, calling in. We know it's a busy time of year and it's great to see, I've seen so many people online. Um, do send any feedback. You can do that um, through prfluids at aps.org. Um, if there's things you'd like to see, let us know. And um, don't forget if you're going to the DFD meeting to come to the uh, APS booth there and um, you'll see some of us around and about there. You'll see goodies and uh, all sorts of things. So um, thank you for calling in and I think we should uh, 
we should wrap there, huh? Thank you. Uh, before we go, there is a there is a quick final question that someone putting uh, Dubar Row asked: Can rebuttals be published along with the paper? No, not for uh, PR fluids. So PR fluids still very much uh, a journal and it's a traditional format where um, um, you publish the paper. The paper that you publish is the revised version, and so sometimes it has gone through one round, sometimes three rounds. Uh, you know, most of the time, one or two rounds. Uh, but you don't publish anything else around the paper. This remains confidential to the reviewing process. And in a flurry of last minute questions, question about uh, <laughs> if a poster won a prize at the APSDFD, so the Gallery of Fluid Motion, is there an invitation for publication in PRF? Yes, yeah, so that was on one of Brad's slides that um, through the Gallery of Fluid Motion coordinator, the prize winning uh, posters are invited to submit a two page um, summary. Well, small, I think it's two, two to three page summary of the poster. We have a, a special collection on the Gallery of Fluid Motion, and that has just gone live, I think, for last year's um, DFD. Is that right, Brad? That's correct, yeah. Yes, so you can see last year's, um, the, the top posters and, and, vid uh, and videos, the top contributions to the Gallery of Fluid Motion there, uh, if you go to our website. Only by invitation, yes, that's correct. Yeah, they're not um, full papers in the, in the context of... Uh, um what we you know what we would expect to review normally these are summaries of the the posters yep so ex excuse me can i uh, ask you quickly um i'm paris i might be uh one a poster in 2020 20. um so can i still go ahead and publish a two or three pages or no you have to contact us that that's my actually the question oh Thank yeah you that comes from the um gallery fluid motion coordinator on the APS side so those invitations come uh from that person I see thank yeah. you thank you okay thank you, everyone. thanks everybody